Hermione pushes past them with tears in her eyes. They literally trapped Hermione alone with a troll. God, this girl's such a liability. It's like she wants to die. Hey guys! Today I'm going to be reacting to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by JK Rowling. But first, if you're new around here, listen up because I've got a little secret for you. I'm not just any YouTuber. I am Charlotte the Starlet and I'm a writer. So I don't just react, I review. And the way I do it is simple. If I like something, I add a point, starting from last video's total. And if I don't, I take one off. Now, as y'all can see, I've got a couple of friends here with me. This is Angel and this is Seth. Right, let's jump in. <gasps> Yo! Ooh! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You guys, I think Harry's broomstick just arrived in the mail. Damn. It says that a long, thin package was being carried by six screech owls to Harry. Along with the letter. Ooh. The letter says, do not open the parcel at the table. It contains your new Nimbus 2000. I was right, but I don't want everybody knowing that you've got a broomstick or they'll all want one. Oliver Wood will meet you tonight on the Quidditch pitch at seven o'clock for your first training session. Two months have now gone by since Harry first started going to Hogwarts. You know, he's finally gotten to know the place, he's finally settled in, and he's starting to actually feel like home now. Apparently the lessons are also becoming more interesting now that they've mastered all the basics. <gasps> Yo! On the morning of Halloween, Harry wakes up to the smell of baking pumpkin wafting through the corridors. Ooh, and in his charms lesson, Professor Flitwick announced that they are at the point where they're ready to start making objects fly. Yo, yo, is this it? Is this the scene? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The whole, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> That line will forever be legendary. <laughs> right, so Professor Flitwick puts them into pairs to practice. That's no fun. Bruh, the lessons where you could pick your own partner were the best. Teachers picking pairs is almost as bad as teachers picking your seats. I remember at my secondary school, we would always have a seating plan prepped for us every lesson every day oh my god i swear i got paired with some wrong uns i definitely sat next to people i didn't like anyway harry gets paired with seamus finnegan which he was relieved about because neville had been trying to catch his eye so that he could get paired with him oh no no ron get paired with Hermione. Honestly, Ron, you have my condolences. Goodness. She still ain't talking to them. Just because Harry got a broom. Your jealousy ain't cute, Hermione. It ain't Harry's fault that you aren't talented. Ah yes, the good old swish and flick. <laughs> Did I do it right? Swish and flick. Oh, oh wow. They're really struggling with this. They have to try and make a feather levitate, but all that Harry and Seamus managed to do was set it on fire. Hey, the line! Hermione's like, it's Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> make the guard nice and long. Goodness, Ron failed as much as Harry did, but when Hermione had a go, she practically managed to make the feather float to the ceiling. Oh my days, and then Hermione gets singled out by Professor Flitwick. As much as I'm tempted to, I can't really judge her for it. You know why? Because when I was in school, I was often that kid. <laughs> I was often the example. 
especially in English. However, those examples can get annoying, especially if you're struggling with the work or you don't like the person who's the example. Oh my god, damn! <gasps> Yo, you'll never guess what happened afterwards. After the lesson, Ron complains to Harry about Hermione. He's like, honestly, she's a nightmare. And as soon as he says that, Hermione pushes past them with tears in her eyes. Ron made her cry. She overheard him talking mess about her. Oh my days. I might seem like a witch for saying this, but he's got a point. She's insufferable! Like, how does it not occur to her that if you want to make friends, you shouldn't be so damn bossy. You shouldn't be a damn snitch. You shouldn't be so patronizing. It ain't rocket science, Hermione. Jesus. Okay? It says that after Hermione pushed past Ron and Harry crying, nobody saw her for the next lesson. A little bit sus? Oh damn, she wasn't seen for the rest of the day, practically. Oh yeah, it's Halloween! So it says that when Harry and Ron were on their way to the Great Hall for the Halloween feast, they overheard Parvati Patil telling Lavender that Hermione was in the bathroom crying and she just wanted to be left alone. Whoa, oh my days. As soon as they enter the Great Hall though, they just forget about Hermione completely. Because the Great Hall looks amazing. It says that there are 2,000 live bats in the Great Hall for Halloween. Yo. It says that the bats swooped over the tables in low black clouds, making the candles in the pumpkins stutter. I absolutely love that description. Yo, we've got another iconic scene about to happen. The Halloween feast had barely started when Professor Crow came running into the hall with his turban askew and terror on his face. He goes right up to Dumbledore and while panting, he says troll in the dungeon. Just thought you ought to know. And then he just collapses. Yo, the entire Hall goes crazy. And to get everyone's attention, Dumbledore fires a few purple firecrackers from the end of his wand. That shuts everyone up. Then he instructs all the prefects to lead everyone else back to their dorms. Aww. Ruin the mood a bit. So as they go back, Harry and Ron are obviously talking about it. Ron's wondering how the troll got in, because apparently they're meant to be hella stupid. Then he thinks that Peeves might have let it in just for a joke. Oh snap. They're, they're like halfway back to their dorm when Harry suddenly grabs Ron's arm and stops him. Then he reminds him that Hermione's in the bathroom and still doesn't know. Wow. So they head to the girl's bathroom to let her know despite their arguments and despite her being upset with them. That is a surprisingly mature thing for a couple of 12 year olds to do. I rate them for that. <gasps> Oh my god. Ooh, Snape's up to something. <gasps> He's headed for the third floor where the dog and the trap door is. What? But then all of a sudden, Harry and Ron start smelling something disgusting. It says it smelled like a mixture of old socks with a public toilet sort of smell. Oh my days, guys. It's the troll. Damn. It says the troll was 12 feet tall and his skin was a dull granite grey. Its great lumpy body like a boulder with a small bold head perched on top like a coconut. What a description. Oh it's not done. It had short legs thick as tree trunks with flat horny feet. Oh my gosh. It's also holding a huge wooden club which he's dragging across the floor so the troll wanders into a room and harry smartly realizes that the door to the room still has the key in its lock so he and ron quickly lock the troll in that room no way no it turns out that the room harry and ron locked the troll in was the girl's bathroom. They literally trapped Hermione alone 
with a troll. When Harry and Ron first locked the troll in the room, it didn't actually reveal which room it was until Hermione let out a blood curdling scream. That's when they realized. Right, so they hurry back to the girl's bathroom and see Hermione trapped in a corner of the room with the troll getting closer and closer to her. So when the troll sees Harry and Ron, it pauses for a minute and decides to forget about Hermione and go for Harry instead to give Hermione a chance to escape. Wow, the fact that they're all yelling at it is actually triggering the troll a lot. He has a brief moment of confusion but then decides to go for Ron. Ooh, it says Harry then did something that was both very brave and very stupid. He took a great running jump and managed to fasten his arms around the troll's neck from behind. Whoa, what? It says the troll couldn't feel Harry clinging onto his neck. However, it will feel if you stick a piece of wood up his nose. Oh my days. Ew. It says that because Harry's wand had still been in his hand when he jumped on the troll, it went right up his nose. Oh god. Jeez. The way Harry is clinging onto this troll's back honestly makes the troll sound like a mechanical bull. Oh my days, Hermione. God, this girl's such a liability. She had every chance to run now that Harry and Ron had distracted the troll for her, but y'all know what she does? She just sinks to the floor and cries. It's like she wants to die. Why do Harry and Ron have to do all the work? Ooh, wow. Okay, so Ron is actually capable of doing some quick thinking as well. Because he just instinctively pulled out his wand and then cast Wingardium Leviosa on the troll's club. Wow. Then he lets it drop on the troll's head, which knocks it out. I saw I Scott, if Hermione doesn't run now, I'm gonna lose all respect for her. Oh my days. <laughs> When Harry pulled his wand out of the troll's nose, it says that it looked like it was covered in lumpy grey glue. Uh oh. After they knock the troll out, Professor McGonagall bursts into the room, closely followed by Snape and Quirrell. <laughs> Quirrell is such a pussy, I swear. He's such a coward. He takes one look at the troll, lets out a faint whimper, and then sits down clutching his heart. What do you think this is? This ain't a soap opera. Why is it these teachers that turned up though? None of them have anything to do with magical creatures. Damn. Oh snap. They might legit be in trouble this time. Harry's never seen McGonagall this angry. Right, then they start questioning them on what they were doing here and why. Oh my days. Thank you! Hermione actually owns up to something. She admits that the only reason they are there is because Harry and Ron were looking for her. Hermione tells the teachers that she went looking for the troll because she thought she'd be able to deal with it because she's read all about them. <laughs> that is just as bad as looking up symptoms on Google and thinking you're suddenly a doctor now. Damn, Hermione goes as far to tell McGonagall that Harry and Ron actually saved her life. Aww. Professor McGonagall takes five points from Gryffindor. Oh, however, she awards Harry and Ron five points each. But she warns them that she's gonna tell Professor Dumbledore about this. Aww. So the three of them head back to the common room and the chapter ends by saying that from this day on, Harry and Ron considered Hermione a friend. There we go. That is the end of chapter 10. This was a very eventful video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give that like button a little kiss and subscribe to become a starlet. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Instagram and Twitter. And if you have read something that has just left you shook beyond repair, let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys later. Bye.